Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we are. Good evening. It is Monday night. It is 10-Year Tip with me, Gary Dibley, and the very capable, as usual, Mark. Uh, just a little brief warning for you guys tonight. You may well be hearing lots and lots of bangs. Um, yes, it's not that the neighbours have returned from their honeymoon. It is the fact that it's fireworks night. And uh, unfortunately, I'm sat in the middle of the garden. Um, and, uh, you know, they're going off everywhere. Um, however, if we get time, we may spark up some of these in the shed. Don't be silly. Of course I'm not going to do that. Um, so, this week we do have, obviously, we're, 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 I think we're, whether we're still testing, um, I'm not sure how we're looking today, um, but we had the little test session yesterday, um, which seemed to go well. Um, we do seem to uh, have things, and hopefully um, today the audio is slightly more balanced than it was yesterday, because I'm not on the webcam anymore. Uh, we do have a, a nice little, I tell you what, I have been um, seriously, seriously impressed with, um, with Mark's, Mark's wood. Um, you're going to see that finished up tonight and uh, I do get back on the wood myself. So what we're going to do, let's pop into our first little bit of the final three portions of, uh, of Mark's wood. And it's looking damn good, I can tell you. Right then, so all the glue's set and I've sanded off a bit of the ends at least. And then, let's see, that's fitting together nicely and it doesn't move. So we're in business. So, so far I've sanded off the top just using my mini sander. And I'll finish it off by hand when I'm finished. But now it's in a position where I can drill the holes. But the bit I'd normally use to drill this is this stepped bit. But to get down to the depth would be far too long. The switch will get in the way. So I'm going to start it off with this and then switch over to the bigger one to finish it off. And that should give me the width at the top to fit in the atomizer connector. So just in case I'm going to add the clamps on to hold this wood in place just to give a bit of extra support so hopefully it won't come apart when I try and drill the hole. So. Fit the four clamps right at the end just to try and hold it all together. Mm -hmm. Get that fit on. And of course, the switch is in the way, that's what the problem is. Right, so I've got the pieces there. So I'll gently start off with this and hopefully it all goes ok or it could all go terribly wrong and ruin the whole thing. Fingers crossed. That will do 
need them anymore. Graduated hole down the center. And if I can find. Oh, I don't know, is it connected? Hopefully. Yeah. I am going to have to go down with another drill bit and drill a bit out of there. But I'm back when I sort that out. Right then, after a bit of work, I've got something that I'm fairly happy with. It's not perfect, but it's all the way in. There's a slight gap on one side from all the various drilling. Uh, but that'll be filled in with glue, so it'll be fine. And it'll be covered over by whatever I've got on the top anyway. So I'm pretty much ready. Just need to pop the cover on. And I'm going to have to finish off sanding these edges flat. Uh, well, the sand is so noisy I cannot record that because it's just, you'll all get deafened basically. But I shall do all the rough sanding, I'll be back when we do the finishing off and put the electronics in properly. Right then, to update you all, um, so far what I've done is I have, with the electric sander, I've sanded off all the edges flat, so there's no more ridges anywhere, and I've rounded off all of the corners on the way around, top and bottom, so it's comfortable to hold in the hand. And then, by hand, with a fine, a very fine sandpaper, I've sanded off all the surfaces, polished them up, top and bottom as well. Then I added beeswax, and to do that, I took the blowtorch, melted the wax onto the wood, and then very carefully running the flame upon me, across the wood, I melted the wax in, a bit at a time, heating it up, heating the wood up, till the wax was well melted in. Used a cloth to rub the wax in getting it working out well into all the grain and just keep working it, heating it, working it till pretty much all the wax is absorbed into the wood then polish it off with the cloth that's pretty much where we're at now I'll probably want a couple more coatings of wax before I'm finished but that will do for now I think so it's time to finish off all the electrics I think Right, so we have finally decided to give the wood another go. Um, haven't got all the bits I need, um, losing my voice this week. So, uh, show you roughly, I know Mark's been steaming ahead with his wood, the bugger. Um, I haven't, obviously as far as I got while I was waiting for bits, we had our um, tube that we, we hollowed out to take our battery, we had our top cap, um, we were going to use a bottle top to switch. Now I've decided to, to do this a little bit differently. Um, I've got managed to get hold of one of these. Now um, this is a, if you like, a, a, an end cap that, um, let me show you down on there. It's what you put on ducting effectively, um, a brass end cap. So literally that's where you're, yeah, and you'd seal it off with that. It's, it's used for electrical works, ducting and things like that. Um, now, the beauty of this is this will give me, if you like, an adjustable throw um, or how much of the button is showing. I'm um, going to be trying to solder a spring on the bottom of here and this is pretty much, uh, if you see the depth of, of this wood that I have here. Hence being able to adjust up this, this switch so I can set that, you know, within reason where I want it to be. Um, how are we going to switch it? So effectively this is going to be through here, he says. Now I've got very little room for error. Um, 
on this because I've got to get a couple of the uh, the earth magnets in to seal that top on. It looks a bit battered. Um, it needs all fully sanding down and things like that. I've started to uh, trim out and painfully with with a. I'm, I'm just filing back, knocking back this. I'm going to have my positive um, connection down inside there, which is leading out to my attic. So when my battery is in place, I have my negative bit showing. And this is the bit that we're going to switch. We're going to uh, strip back, and this is the reason why we're recessing this ever so slightly. Um, we're going to be making up, if you like, a, a mini little loom um, that's going to sit inside that recess, like so. He says, you get the picture, it won't stay in there, the bugger. But that's going to, that's going to sit in that recess. Now effectively, what will happen is this recess um, is going straight down and being wired to the to the neg side. So this wire that's stripped back will be going to a negative terminal. The spring that's going to be in the base of this will make contact with the uh, with the negative portion of the battery. But as of yet, there's no contact for the uh, for the bat you know for the battery. Because this is going to be um, soldered through to a neg connection, when we when we press this switch down, bearing in mind that we've already got a contact with our, our negative end, because this will be, if you like, holding it off touching this wire. So that's that's holding that away from touching that wire on the spring. So when we press this down, it will actually go down inside, hit that wire and complete the connection to the battery. That's it in theory. Um, how that works in practice, I do not know as yet. But we do have our little uh, our little earth magnets. Oh Jesus, they're so strong these little burgers. Um, that we're gonna we're gonna stick down. It's even goes look goes through your finger. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still been playing with those. Anyway, so that, that's what we're going to be doing, theoretically. So that's how we are looking at switching it. What I have to do um, is do a lot more uh, gentle filing. I'm trying to get, if you like, a, a little lip on this, that this wire will, will just sit in. Um, how we're going to fix that in yet, I, I don't know. But obviously it's, it's got to be in that recess enough that we can, we've can got a clear path to get a battery in and out. Um, that is it all in theory. Um, we may have to we might apply a little tiny bit of epoxy around the outside of here <laughs> to um, to seat that in and, and get it all sealed in. Again, it's it's making this ring to the right diameter, and I'm gonna I'm gonna strip back some of this um, wire and make a heavier gauged. Um, I'll double it up, ring it, measure it, drop it in. And then what I'll have to do is solder a wire coming from here, running down the channel that I've got inside there, popping it out to our, our attic connection. As I say, it all works well in theory. In practice, however, it may be an entirely different thing. Um, so, whereas Mark is probably polishing his wood, I'm starting to butcher mine again. This may take a couple of weeks. There's a lot of work in between. Um, there's probably going to be lots of these end caps split and buggered and this, that and the other. It's probably going to be swearing and all that sort of stuff. So, I'm going to go and file this away, see if I can drill this out. Um, and then when I come back, what we'll, we'll effectively start looking at doing is seeing how we can get something like this installed through there. Hopefully it'll all fit. I'll pop back in two. Mark, go polish your wood. So there we go. As, as you can see, and as I said, Mark, that wood is damn stunning. Um, I'm sure there would be a huge market for those. And Mark reckons he could, he could turn those out three, four a night, he was just saying in, in the Skype chat we were having there. Um, Pretty sure he could as well. Um, yes, I reckon we should all hassle Mark to make those. I'm sure he's going to love me for that. 
and uh, I have tried. I've tried to sit up a bit because um, Dave said my head needed to come up. Misunderstood him to start with, but uh, we got there in the end. Um, so hope my head's up further, Dave. And and we we did have hints of um, maybe I should dye my hair as well. Um, the, the sort of the got some new LED lighty things. Um, I'm not sure I'm loving them um, that much at all. We're going to slip into our first little ad break, and uh, we'll pop back uh, with some more of Mark's Wood after this. <laughs> held off for just a second there because um, just as that last little hand bit was running in the next door neighbours decided to let off a 58 shot rocket yes it's probably revenge from last night um, as we did do a little bit last night um, and we, you know we may still I'm not sure could be dangerous um, we'll give it a go I know that Super 7 doesn't live too far from me and I'm sure he would rush around with a fire extinguisher if I needed one um, or some marshmallows, as I believe he did say in chat. We're going to crack on with Mark's Wood, and uh, we're going to run into a couple of uh, couple of mine after that. I'll see you back after this little stream. And so, the first thing you need to do is touch the wires to this. As I remove the old ones, so. Thing I'm going to be on right now. I'm tinning everything up and soldering it together. So. Nice bit of solder on there. Same on the other end. Mm -hmm. 
the solder to that connector. so easy with a switch in the way. Well, we can't manage it. So. In just in through the hole. is a little bit tight to work with in here but I've taken the black wire run it around the switch and about through the top hole so the red one I need to cut off so it can go through the switch and if I can find what I've just done with my knife there we go. new knife a bit safer I think Right, 
right so we have been drilling um, and uh, this was the point that I realized the earth magnets I got were rather too big um, but they'll have to do um, what I may have to do is put something like a metal plate or something in here I, I don't know whether I'm gonna get them in here that will probably be next week anyway and by then I will have probably cast and binned it um, so yeah we've we've narrowed out a little recess in the top there and we've done with our step drill a two-stage drill through here for this to pop through like so um, so that will pop up like that and when it's on the top and you press it down it will make the contact theoretically um, yes it looks battered yes it looks blah 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 but the beauty of wood is you can sand it down afterwards which is what we are going to do and Mark is probably on that stage um, I've made these uh, oversized for my magnets um, for a very good reason um, and the reason for that is didn't have a drill with the fit um, but these are these are um, you know the the rare earth magnets what I'm going to do is they are going to be sealed in there with epoxy um, these things are incredibly strong they are absolutely and they, they look they're, they're quite um, you can you can use your the electricity generated if you rub your fingers together um, and, and bring it closer you've got to build up your static charge in your hand and as you move that magnet yeah, move your hand in you can start getting them to there uh, that's, that's impressive stuff There we go. Um, of course, that was all complete and utter rubbish. Um, what are we going to do now? Uh, it looked impressive, though, didn't it? Um, we are going to measure my ring. Um, I'm going to bring in a little stunty here. Um, look, and you'll, you'll see signs of abuse already. Look, there are signs of abuse. He is being broken in. Uh, so, what are we going to do? Um, just to show you again, our top cap's going to sit in like that with a spring on there. That's going to sit on the top. Da, da, da. And as you can see, that's dropped through. But the tension of the magnet, the magnet of the spring, will hold that clear of our wire that we're going to put in here. Now, I am going to epoxy these in place. Um, and what I need to do is firstly get some wire. And I'm going to roughly measure out on here a ring of where I need to go. Um, I'm going to start stripping this back. So just stripping this wire back now. Which isn't that blooming easy. Because I want to keep my strands intact as such. So I'm just measuring out enough of this strip back wire to run a ring around here. Now, what I'm going to have to do is double this up. So once I've got roughly enough, just giving it a spin makes it easier to work with. Spin and a ring. It's about right for that bit. I'm just going to twist that up. Now, all of this stuff we've never done before. This is all new. So, we are pretty much winging it. He says. Once I've got my ring. I'm going to double that up. snip off just past you can see what I've done let me come down so you can see so I've stripped back the wire with enough to, to go around there in a ring and I'm just going to bend that back over so I can get a rough double of where I need to go and then I'm going to snip that back on this end and what I'm going to start doing then is stripping it back from to the end So 
That's all my insulation's off. And it's a booger. It's a little booger. Well, the reason why I'm doing this, he says taking half the wire with him, I need to have a that's just doubled over. I want to have a, a big old chunk of this running around there. I want a, a nice big thick load of wire. And then what I'm going to do is size this into a ring ish roughly like that sort of stuff and then what I'm going to do is try and feed, I've left a little strand there and I need to try and get these so they knit together we can trim this off afterwards because what I'm going to do then is start working this with some solder. Like I say, we are winging this big time. Any loose wires you've got, I'm just working around there. And effectively what this is going to do is it's going to form our ring, which our... Um, Because I've got to do it so our battery is going to be able to go over the top of that. What I might do is, is go away and try and make a neater ring because I also need one that my battery is going to go through with ease. So I'm going to go away, I'm going to go and make a, a new ring um, because that one was just far too ridiculously stupid and um, I may find something else to do it with see what I've got I'll pop back in two see after all that he had a far better idea you can now see my ring on my bench um, we we basically we had some of this 2.5 mil um, electrical cable um, only because I've been uh, using that to wire the kitchen and the shed. Um, now a nice bit of 2.5 effectively what I've done here I have, he says, trying to get a bit more light down on the thing it's dark today I tell you what knocking everything flying there we are saying oh, oh look one thing I must show you one thing I've got to show you, look. <laughs> New hotspots. He finally made, oh, he says saying that there was one on top. Not now, just got dry. He finally made one work. Impressed. <laughs> Very happy that the uh, the videos that have been doing the rounds at the moment, are, you know, they've helped me no end with that. Um, so, what have I got? I've got my little ring now of 2.5. Now, this is going to be more than adequate. What I'm going to do, I've got a, a little seam on there, um, where obviously it was cut. And I've made, a, obviously, the groove that's running down inside here. So I'm going to position that seam over the groove there and that will give me if you like a contact ring for this brass now when that comes down that is going to make contact with that what I'm going to have to do obviously is run a wire down in my channel out to my atomizer connection and the way that I've been thinking about doing this let me just pop my atty connection out um, I'm going to get a little bit in there down on stunty and I'm just gonna position up um just grab a little bit solder he's waffling today lots to do we're doing fireworks tomorrow 
excuse my hands in the way, and uh, I've got to go and move everything flammable out of the garden. I did tell my wife the shed was going to be going as well, but she wasn't having none of it. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of solder on there now, between those two joints. Now being careful not to blob it everywhere, because um, I need to uh, seal the end of this wire. So I'm going to work this, this little bit of wire down in between those two joints. Let's see if we can get down on that. So I've sort of effectively joined the two together. What I'm going to do now is try and tin up the end of this while I've got here. And I'm just going to fade that down in the middle of that gap. Don't want any over at the top. So that then is attached. So you can see this is, if you like, my negative ring. So that will now, let me just chop a bit of this cable off. Hopefully you're starting to get the idea of this now. That will feed down in my channel. Just get it through me hole. Feed down in my channel, like so. In there. On the top of there like that. And my wires down in that channel that we cut down in there. My battery then should slot down inside there, uninterrupted. And you can sort of see where we're going now. With a spring holding this off here, the spring, I know we've said it loads of times, but, but people kept telling me they couldn't understand where I was going with this. Um, so that the spring will hold that off of there. When you press that down, it's going to come down on top of there. Because this is already in contact with the neg of the of the battery, that's going to make your um, your contact through there, like so. Now I've made sure that I've recessed this ever so slightly down in there, so it won't false fire. What I may have to do is is I may try and nip a little bit more of this out if I can to to get that sort of held down in there. Um, not sure yet, but then again, with my magnets in, that is pretty much what the uh, the top of our mod is is, is going to look like. Um, again, it really depends, I suppose, on on the tension of the spring, um, what sort of spring I, I use to to hold that off here. Um, it's got to be quite good because these are incredibly close. He's thinking as he's going. So, I mean, at the moment, what I might do is, is try and recess this down ever so slightly, a little bit more. Um, I can see where that's holding. He's, he's talking as he's thinking. Might try and recess it ever so slightly. I may even try and take a little bit off, off the top of this. I don't know. It's just to stop false firing. And again, nibbling probably a bit more out inside of here, getting that down as, as low as I can in there is, is going to be key as well. Um, just so when your top isn't, you know, when your top's on, obviously that is, is tight, it's going to be a very small press to activate that. So I'm going to try and take a little bit more out inside here, I think, to, to do that. But effectively, that is sort of where we're going with that. Um, the 2.5 works incredibly well. Um, the 2.5 is incredibly expensive to buy. Um, so if you haven't got any lying around, again, the, the twisting of, of the wire scenario is going to be good. My next stage is, is going to be, I'm going to try and chisel a bit more of that out now. Um, I'll start epoxying things in. Um, I'm going to leave this wire hanging out here. I can work with that when it's in there and I've got enough room to sort of feed a little bit back and it won't interrupt with the battery. My POS pin's got to go in down the bottom as well. And again, my POS wire coming through here. 
um, and then effectively it's going to be spring and, and seal. Before I seal the magnets on I'll, I'll give it probably a test fire. Um, I doubt whether we're going to get that far today. I'll pop away see how we are doing on the timing. Uh, may have five minutes to pop back. If not, it's over to me in the studio, probably looking very jealously at Mark's mod. And he is, I'll tell you, looking very jealously at Mark's mod. I know they're, they're picking up a few bits from the chat there. Um, the, the way that the, the Mark's done his mod and, and layered up that wood, it looks damn good. He is doing a really good job on, on that. Uh, I keep saying it. Because it is, it's uh, you know when when you you follow that through. I think this is our, our third week of, of watching that, um, and and you see something like that take shape from, you know from from start right the way through to in a minute you'll see the uh, the completed mod, um, and I know Mark has been working around working. He's been walking, um, you know, gripping his wood um, very tightly. He's not letting go of that one. I tell you, uh, but. With all that said, my wood mod is turning out to be like vaping Diablo Loco to me. Um, it's becoming painful. I've decided I, I don't like wood very much at all. Uh, no. Um, not getting on with it. Um, but we will persevere and continue and we will probably end up burning it. Um, along with the shed if we do like the sparklers tonight which I doubt very much because my wife has just poked her head through the door and said if you like those you're divorced um, so it's probably not a good idea may try it don't know we'll see I'll wait for her to go to bed um, and if she's in bed by 10 we'll like them gonna pop into our second little air break um, he's got to find it first and uh, I'll see you back after this <laughs> in the room once again and rapidly approaching our last little section for tonight. Um, one thing I'm going to do, and I know it pains quite a lot of you, but I am going to have to play it. Um, this will be the last time um, because I hope very much that next week we will be um, commencing the little auction for the children in need thing uh, for Stunty. Um, and then Stunty, you know, before he goes, we'll have to record the uh, the full Christmas album. Um, so see how that goes. But uh, I'll be back very shortly after this. No, no, no. <laughs> there once was a shed, a 
a shed not too far away. Where the stunt wrench was born. And now, Senor Stunt is up for our chin, but you do not need it. So how do I bid, I hear you say? Well, you have to watch a special man, a Gary Dibley on a tin your tip, and uh, he will tell you very shortly. Yes, it is true. We are pimping Stunty for children in need. Um, I will probably uh, do something next week. Um, that may well be the last time you see that video. I may sneak it in again somewhere very soon, he says. I know you're getting sick of it. Um, this week, I must tell you very quickly, because I have a little time to kill looking at the schedule, and uh, I, I, I didn't waffle enough at the start. So I've wrote down on my pad now, waffle more dibbly. So you've got me for another two minutes. Um, I'm going to be trying something new. Um, ever since I, I sort of tried the dripping atty type thing um, and getting my rebuildable you know uh, thing working genesis -y type -y thing job doodah what's it um, I decided the one thing that I haven't actually tried and um, we, we don't sort of you know I don't try everything I, I, I've sort of stuck to something I know and used it the kick features very heavily in, in most things that, that I vape. Um, I like the variable wattage on that um, and a couple of EVs lying around as well. Um, I've, I, I made a visit today uh, over to, uh, I went over to Safer Sigs and decided to give some 306s a try. Um, something I haven't done yet at all. Uh, and we may well, uh, we may well film Something of that experience, um, if if uh, if Mark wants it for Vapor Scene, um, which I'm sure you agree, absolutely brilliant new show on uh, on on the station, um, all good stuff, um, and I'm on there doing a juice review soon as well. Um, so yes, I'm I'm going to have a dabble with with some three o sixes, and I think I've got some Icon Vape ones and a jobby thing. I don't know. I clicked. Um, so yes. We'll be doing something, something with those, because um, I've never tried one. Never tried a 306 Etsy. I'm ashamed to say. So I shall put that right. We're going to go now. Uh, this bit here is, um, I must say, I'm a little saddened to uh, to have to play this video because it is the final part of Mark's Wood. Um, next week, Mark will be moving on. Do pastures new, we hope, and uh, you know, showing us his his exceptional talents once again. Um, I think we, we, we were sort of talking and, and running through a schedule, and we do have an idea um, where we're going to be going, sort of after this. Um, but this is the final part of Mark's wood, and we all must pay homage to the wood after this video.
inside as well. this in through the hole. Thinking back on it, it might have been easier if I'd done this first. Should have done originally was soldered onto the atomizer connector and ran the wires down through to this part where I'd be soldering on the in much better room. But I did the wrong way around. So got the atomizer connector in, just run it to have a super glue around the end, and this will be filled in a bit later on. And I'll hold it in place. I've glued down the battery connector as well, just so that doesn't move. last connector and we'll be done. seconds because as well as all it needs to cool off. But there we go. And there we have it. Now it helps when you're gonna test something to make sure that what you're using when you first going to test it has a full battery, not a flat one. But anyway. That's enough for me for now. 
catch you all next week. Enjoy. Thought I'd come back and just point out on, on reflection. Because um, we I think we had a couple of minutes to kill. Won't waffle too much. Basically, um, what it would have been far easier for me to do um, is to, when I was drilling this, um, A, got some magnets that were the right size, and B, I should have, if I would have drilled um, the large diameter hole first, and then sent it up and drilled afterwards, I wouldn't be having this pain I'm having now. So you could have drilled out a, a bigger hole first, and then follow through with your, with your battery diameter. Um, however, what I'm having to do here, uh, I've just been chiseling out or nibbling out a very small groove now around on the inside of this, um, all the way around, just to be able to, and again, it's been a pain doing this, but you know very gradually just nibbling out. Now, I know I shouldn't have my hand behind there but I'm having to do it this way so you guys can see it on camera. So by nibbling out that little groove with the chisel that will make sure then that when we set our ring in drop down as you can see drop down inside and then when our battery's in that gives me a bit more if you like play on on the way that we're going to switch this I might try and seat it a bit further down if I can um, but that involves a little bit more nibbling with the chisel um, I think that is probably going to be the limit of our time this week on, on here. Next week we'll be uh, epoxying, installing the switch, testing um, and then we're sanding. Um, by that time Mark's probably on to three other mods. Um, back to me in the studio and talk to you in a bit. And there we go. My little waffle earlier proved to fill the time perfectly. Um, again, loving that Mark. Um, absolutely brilliant. It is time to say goodnight. We will see you all next week um, with more from Tinny Tip. And don't forget tomorrow night, um, obviously, a vapor scene. See you later, guys. Tin Your Tip with Gary Dibley.